What's up, Internet? Brandon here with Jimmy. And uh, we got a movie review. We do. We're taking a look back. We're going down. We're strolling down memory lane, revisiting some older superhero films uh, as we started with X-Men last time. And today, here we are, the sequel. X. X2. When this first came <laughs> out, uh, like I was thrilled as we talked about in the first one. I really enjoyed when X-Men came out because it was the first superhero team and obviously the first time we saw X-Men in a live action. Yeah. Stoked. It was awesome. So I was excited to see the second one when it came out in theaters. And when I saw it, it was so good. Like, awesome. The way they oh, used Phoenix. I remember it kicking ass. Oh, it was uh, so as a, good. As a younger person, I remember it being <sighs> pretty fucking dope. And then 20 years later, we have a lot of other superhero movies that have come out. Now revisiting it, it's like, okay. I, I mentioned it in one of the other segments where, like, with the Snyderverse, it was like, oh, are we going to... Are we going to take that turn to the direction we need? And it just went the other direction. And I felt like this movie had a lot of those tools. And you're like, okay, I think we're getting the hang of this. Yeah. And then by the next one, it just went off the rails. Well, that's a good point. This is an improvement over the first one. We definitely delve more into the um, bigotry against the mutants. Yes. Um, we deal more with the kids. We obviously have more of a focus on Wolverine. We have the, I, I fear for anybody that tries to break into the mansion. Yeah. And I, that was badass. And uh, the introduction of Stryker. Brian Cox is Stryker. Brian Cox a does such a great job and, in this movie, though. And Stryker like, is a character, and I didn't realize that he's like a through line through a lot of the X-Men yes. films. But it all started here with Brian Cox. And it yeah. was just phenomenal the way he deals with it. Um, and his son... And how he hates mutants because his son's a mutant and utilizes his son's ability to uh, influence. Imagine my surprise at reality. that age, only knowing Brian Cox from Super Troopers <laughs> and being like, he's going to be a bad guy. <laughs> like, So this is another <laughs> age thing. Um, I'd seen Manhunter, so I knew yeah. as Hannibal Lecter, he, he could, could do be it. a good villain. Yeah. I never thought of that was Super Troopers. <laughs> that was my first introduction. I was like... <laughs> Chief from Super Troopers wow. is a bad guy? <laughs> it never occurred to me. That's hilarious. Yeah. Yes. Um, I do have to say, first and foremost, first thought of watching this movie is the scene where uh, they're in the museum on the school field trip and Professor Xavier makes everybody freeze and stop. And as, an, as a kid, you're like, whoa, he's so powerful. As an adult, I'm like, how much brain damage is he causing? Like, can they still think? Has he frozen them? Are they still breathing? I'm super confused. Is it like, like they pass like, there's like two or three minutes. Those yeah. people stop moving and functioning. Like, and then he does it again. Well, and I feel like that's part <laughs> of the technology. There's certain things like Iceman. They just, they couldn't figure out as far as CGI and making him look cool. They just, it wasn't. It was oh early. man, I, 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 there are certain scenes I yeah. remember in X3 that I'm not looking forward to with that. But that's so. like, like almost like the Wachowskis with uh, the Matrix. They had this new technology. They're going to use it, so they froze people several times. Yeah. It's like, really, really? And the first time I saw it with like Nightcrawler and all that, I'm like, this is fucking bad. You know what? I will I say, it. Nightcrawler was still cool to see. I, I, I was and, impressed. And I think that was yep. done well. That aged well. Yes. Just the way they used him, uh, the way they did his powers. I did. Uh, and one of the times, one of the times I laughed was every time he gets reintroduced. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, my name is Kirk Wagner. But in the circus, I was known as the Amazing Nightcrawler. Like, and it's like they're making fun of themselves, like we talked about in the yes. first one. Like, this is Scott Summers, a.k.a. Cyclops. I, that this was is Aurora Monroe, <laughs> a.k.a. Storm. Speaking, of, Stop speaking it. of Storm, that accent <laughs> dropped real fucking fast. That was... Uh, what accent? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was a uh, very... Cool. But uh, <laughs> Alan Cummings as Nightcrawler, that's not one of the things I would have been like, oh, dude, that's a perfect match. Awesome. But he did. It was, like, fantastic. I, I did like how... He, it was such a good character. It was a really good inclusion. So you're hoping to see him in the third one. And he was like, I'm not doing that makeup again. Get fucked. Like, yeah. no, that was a one time no, we're done deal for shit. me. <laughs> it was fucking hilarious. To me. And then I'm sure they're like, oh shit, we only signed him up for one film. Why, why did we Duh. do that? That was stupid. And he was. He was a great character in it. I, no, I really it. enjoyed it. it. Really cool. I thought the storyline was good. Um, especially since the first one was like, where did you get this story from? And the third one was like, where the fuck did you get this story from? The second one, I'm like, okay, I dig it. We well, got they Wolverine dig into the weapon. Well, that's the thing with the Wolverine thing. And I always laugh at people like, 
oh, Wolverine's... Uh, and it's like, yeah, but he's the main draw yeah. of every X-Men film. Yeah. Like, there's... The, the focus changes almost immediately. And, I mean, to be honest, it was the same thing with the animated series when we were kids. Like, you know, everybody drew, yeah. pushed towards Wolverine. And it was one of the great story arcs that you have opposing sides, Magneto and Xavier. But because they have a common enemy, they come together. And then when they're in the facility... <laughs> And they're like, you see these moments where Ian McKellen is just amazing. Where it's like, yes. you know, it's a really fucked part of that movie, though. What? It's like when when they finally join sides yeah. to get get you know everybody out of uh, the Weapon X facility. They're all on the plane, and there's a scene of like Mystique and Magneto, like oh, yeah, whispering and like giggling, and then they're like, "What are you laughing at?" And like this fucking like seventy year old man is talking shit with his accomplice of like, hey, we like what happened to your hair. Like, remember when I fucking took you and tried to murder you? Like, they're just talking shit on the plane. But I kind of liked it's it. Because so it's like, that yeah, fucking rogue. <laughs> like, like <laughs> look at her dumb hair. I did that. I did that when I tried to murder her. And that was some of the, like, I've never been infatuated with pyro. Like, I can't even think of a time where I'm like, oh, cool, there's pyro. And there's pyro, and now he joins... With Magneto at the end. Well, and that like, that was cool. cool. Well, I think... But then it becomes so lame in the third one. Yes. Well, I think he was... Pyro was one of those X-Men villains that was, like, base level recognizable, yes, I think. I agree. Um, it's better than Toad. It is a step up. I will say <laughs> that. A, they stepped on Toad's what dead, happens burnt to, body. What happens to a Toad when it's struck by lightning? Some of that was lame, too, when he's like, I'm the worst mutant. And he's just like, ha, 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 fire. And it's like, you know, but... Overall, solid effort, and it was it was uh, an improvement. It was a step in the right direction. And we do get more. What I really did like is we get more to the uh, mutant phobia. Like Bobby goes to visit his parents, and we really see yeah. that like his parents are like, "Well, you went to a special school." He's a mutant. Was <laughs> <laughs> brother like the brother like, cops? Like, what the fuck, fucking dick? dark? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but there's so many stupid '90s jokes when the <sighs> phone rings. He's like. Pfft. And it's like the Batmobile, and he's got the phone. He's like, yeah. oh, hey. It's like, well, I mean, wow. yeah, that, there was a lot of that, too. Um, but I did. I love the ending where you have Jean Grey, like, really realizing her powers as she's holding off the water, lifting up the jet. She's already hurt. And Cyclops and um, Wolverine are like, oh, my God. And Nightcrawler's trying to flip also, out to get her. And it's like super weird scene when, like, Wolverine just decides to make out with Gene. Like, Cyclops isn't dead, or like, like he's missing. He was kidnapped. And just Wolverine's like, I just can't take it anymore. And just like, they make out for a second. She's like, I can't do this. And it was just a weird, like, we will establish a love triangle because we're about to kill her off or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that was what was so difficult is when she's dead, and then we revisit the lake. And we see the bird. The Phoenix. And yeah. it's completely different than any of the comics. So that was cool how they adjusted yeah. it. And we had high hopes for the third one. Well, same thing with, with what I was talking about with the animated series is like they had the they had the gift of being a cartoon. Yes. So they could go for it. Right. Who gives a shit? People who are watching this are comic book fans when that was coming yep. out. It would be a lot harder to tie in the Shi'ar Empire yes. to what they established God, in this yes. movie. So I get that. And it was it, it was Side it was good it. the way they changed it in my opinion. Like, well, yeah, it, it, it has to make sense. sense. Cool. And they alluded to what they were going to do, and then there was high expectations. And I, and not only did they hopeful. fuck that up once, they fucked it up twice. Um, but I, I, you know what? Talking about it now, you can give that movie its credit for yeah. being something that did take something huge in the comics and make it refit in this world, which is what we've seen time and time again with Marvel. Uh, you know, the M the, the MCU is them taking yeah. bigger scope of things and going, well, how do we make it work but not make it stupid? And this is the last time for quite a while with X-Men movies where I was pretty happy with the mutants they chose. Okay, that was the other thing I was going to get to. Because the next one, oh my God, what the hell? But these ones, I'm like, okay, I enjoy the mutants you chose. Like, I was making fun of Pyro. He might be the one I'm like, whatever. But he's still recognizable, like you said, and his powers aren't lame or anything. But it's like the amount of mutants you can still choose yes. from and use, and you still have, like, the kid with the tongue. because You know what I mean? Where he spits his tongue out twice in the movie, and it's like, okay, fine, whatever, but you could have used other people for that. And saying that, 
the things I don't like about X3 that I remember are all things like that, where it's like Omega Red's credited in the credit. We'll talk about it then. But yeah, I, I still wish with the vast catalog you've had, you could have made more people official. And it is funny, the only non-cast member, I guess, that gets a name drop in that movie is Jubilee. When Storm goes, remember the kids are in the the, yes. the drain? Yeah. And she goes, Jubilee! And I remember as a kid being like, oh, we're opening this up to even more. Like, and no, we didn't. Thank God we, we didn't. didn't. Although I will say, Bobby Drake, Iceman, is like my one of my favorite X-Men. I love him because I think he's always underrated at how powerful he is. Yeah, and I mean, they kind is. of pulled the Aquaman on him. He's like, what, no ice? <sighs> that was that was Chilled the Dr. Funny. Pepper, and I'm like, great. Also, just a, just a thing to show how better the fights have gotten in these movies too because like oh, although yeah. this one's good uh, there were some scenes that could have used a little work i did laugh out loud at the uh lady death strike fight because he remember like she's got him like pinned down yeah. and it's just fucking him up from underneath <laughs> and he cuts it and then like it drops so she's like trapped underwater or whatever yeah. And then he gets up and there's kind of a sigh and she busts out of that and gets him again. And all I could think of was Austin Powers when he's like, <laughs> why won't you die? Like, holy crap. I can't. Why won't you die? But, yeah, I don't know. It was better than the first. And it was probably the last good one for a while. I feel yeah. like once I finish these, I will have a more full opinion on it because it was better than I remembered. Still not great, but it was a step up above X-Men. Let us know what you guys think. X2. And be prepared for X3 yeah. and Wolverine Origins coming soon. <laughs>